Have you ever found an old color photo in a box or a closet somewhere that is faded and shifted to an odd color? Have you scanned it and tried to fix it and nothing is working? Well, in this video, you'll learn how to get rid of an unwanted color cast using some tools in Lightroom and Luminar that you might not have considered for this job. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. If you're ready to see how to restore an old color photo and get rid of that nasty color cast, let's do this. Let's deal with this one that is this very strange, you know, cyan color, okay? So when you're working with something that has color like this, we could try the eyedropper in the first case, okay? I'm going to darken the image first a little bit just so we can see the color a little better. Whenever you use this eyedropper, you have to put it on something that is neutral colored, okay? Because if I put it on his red shirt, it's going to make the image more blue, okay? Can you see the preview in the upper left there? Okay, so wherever you hover your, your cursor over, you'll see a preview in that navigator window at the top here. So if you don't have this open, open this navigator window. Okay, if I put it on her jacket, that's way better. Let's try that. Or her shirt, or his boots, or his pants. I think I liked what was happening here on her jacket. Right. We can also zoom in a bit so we can get a more targeted choice, right? Right out of the gate, that's way better, right? So look at the difference, right? So we've gotten rid of sort of that cyan cast, right? So that's pretty good. Then we can work with these a little bit as well. If you want to sort of, you know, we can give it a little more magenta, right? Because it's kind of green, but it's kind of like the highlights are a different color. So... I'm going to go in to work on, um, we can work on actually color grading will be work, will work well on this one. So let's just do the shift double click on the whites and the blacks first. Okay, right, I'm going to go a little more black. Right, now notice as I add more black, the color shift comes back, right? Let's lower the highlights. Okay, so now we've got something that looks green again. So we could try this one more time, or I want to try color grading. Okay, so color grading allows you to adjust the shadows, highlights, and midtones separately. Okay, so I'm going to go with highlights, and you can see that they're really cyan, right? So you don't have to understand the color wheel. It's here visually for you. What's the opposite? So this is the color it is right now. So opposite, it's already there. So I'm just going to drag the saturation up. Look at that. Okay, so see how that's fixing the highlights? So I'm going to drag it up until I see it becoming more neutral, like so. Maybe a little more towards orange. Okay. Now what color is or are the shadows, okay? Is the shadows blue as well? So I can shift the shadows. They actually look red. Okay. So the shadows might need to come from this side. Okay. I can also darken the shadows. Look at that. Okay. So luminance, darken the shadows. And let's see about midtones. The midtones actually look pretty decent, but if I want more sort of flesh color, let's just put orange. Okay. And if you want to see what it's doing, right, drag it up higher. And let's darken those midtones. Seems a little bit green to me, so maybe we want to go a little more to the red. Okay, so look at what color grading is doing. You see that? So from beginning to here. Okay, so basically we've fixed the color problems, okay? As Rob has indicated, please give the video a thumbs up if you're liking it so far. And feel free to share this on your social media streams even now and people can pick up live. So post this on your Facebook and uh, see who joins in with us. Okay, now the other thing I want to do is I actually want to pull this into Luminar because there's a really neat color slider in Luminar, which is remove color cast. Because I still feel like there's some weird shifting in the highlights here, right? So. If I go further, I'm getting more red. 
Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad, right? It's it's a far cry from where we started, right? So we started there and now we're here, okay? So much better. Histogram is looking pretty good, right? Let's see if we got any any whites. And if you're working on an image that has a white border around it, like some of them do, you have to take that into consideration because the border should be pure white, okay? So if you're doing your clippings, keep going till the border is white, right? Potentially. Okay, so that looks really good. So I'm actually gonna take this one into Luminar. Um, let's make the shadows even a little darker. Here we go. So we could add a little bit of contrast. It's still got this kind of odd tint, hasn't it? Right? So let's take this one into Photoshop. Um, and I go to Photoshop first because, again, if we're doing non-destructive editing, we want to use Photoshop as a smart object and then whatever filter we're going to apply there as a smart object, okay? Because it's it's editable, right? So if we can come back to this later, okay? So here's my smart object. And from here, I'm going to open Luminar Neo. So it's a filter, okay? So if you're looking for it, it's down here under Skylum and filter, right? Okay, so the one that I want to work on here is the color tool, okay? So there's this neat slider right here, remove color cast. Let's just see what it does. It's not bad, right? It's making everything a little bit blue, but that I can work with, okay? That I can work with. So we can come back into develop, in the white balance and give it a little bit more yellow, right? Warm it up a little bit, oops, like so. Okay, so let's see what we're doing, right? So it's just picking up that shift again. Okay, the other thing we can do is to add a lot. You can do that in, in Photoshop as well. Like you can add a lookup table in Photoshop. If you want, I could show you how to do that, right? I'm going to add a vignette in here as well. And we could have done this in Lightroom too. I'm just using all the tools at my disposal. Okay. I'm going to make this round. It's, I'm assuming that the subject is this lady and the person taking the photo possibly doesn't even know this kid, right? So I'm assuming that this is the subject here. Let's, okay. So remember, dial the vignette feathered down so you can see where it's going, okay? Like so. Actually, I might darken the floor a little bit more, like that. So I'm just dialing the feather down to zero for the placement, the choose subject, okay? So this is what we had coming into Neo. That's what we got now, okay? There's another neat tool. Um, I'll show you how to do a lookup table here, okay? So the LUT is in the mood tool right here, and I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop as well. Like, let's say we wanna add um, a toning here. So I know that in, where is it? Under creative, okay? So there's these, these ones here that work quite well. Like, look at Smokey, right? So Smokey is adding contrast and adding some brown. It's kind of doing a nice job on this one here. So I like what it's doing there, okay? And we could also pick up the details while we're here. So picking up details in your photo, right? We can try that, you know, neural filter again back in Photoshop under photo restoration. But this is one of my favorite tools in Luminar Neo, right? If you use the detail slider, look what it's doing, okay? So medium details. See how it's bringing out the face? I don't want to go too far or at all with the small details because it's going to bring out grain or anything in the scan. Okay? But we can sharpen here. Okay? Remember, masking keeps it off of the smooth areas. So increase the masking a little bit. But just take these things to extreme and see what they do. Okay? See what that's doing? Look at the nice sharpening effect. Okay. We could also try the Super Sharp AI extension. Uh, I'm not a fan of this one, to be honest. Okay. So I'm going to try Universal Low. It is an AI filter. Yeah, see, this sharpening is just taking forever. Oh, there we go. 
Did it do a decent job? Yeah, I'm not even sure it's doing anything, to be honest. Eh, it's doing okay. So we can leave it, right? It's doing all right. But overall, from this is what we started with. This is what we got now from Neo. Okay. So here's the progression, right? So original, Lightroom edit, technically after Luminar. Okay. So we sharpen things up and so on. Right. If you want to do a comparison in Lightroom, just pick the images you want to compare and hit C for compare mode. Okay. Oops. I want to compare. Yeah. I want to compare those two. Okay, so you can see the Lightroom version on the left and the After Luminar version on the right. Right? Picked up a lot more detail, a lot more sharpening. Look at his look at the guy's helmet, right? His hat. Right? So just a reminder, if you enjoy my teaching style, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course now. It's a complete set of resources and information that you need to learn Luminar Neo from start to finish. To watch another video here on YouTube, just click one on the screen now. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Take care and I'll see you again soon.